1077 The Wolf. This is In Focus, where each week we take a closer look at our community. I'm sitting here in the studio with uh, Nick Rokiki and Joseph Kelly, who are the writers of a children's book. And you guys are from Toledo. We've been doing interviews at TV and radio stations and newspapers in every city that we've gone to. And it's fun to be able to say, I'm from Toledo. Yes. We've been going all around to uh, elementary schools all around the area, uh, spreading the message that kids need to encourage each other. Uh, an anti-bullying message, really, um, that they should encourage instead of bully. It's so much easier to just come in and, and say a positive thing to somebody else instead of uh, being mean and tearing somebody else down. Oh, yeah. So the name of your book is Pete the Popcorn. Pete's the Popcorn, yeah. And not, neither of you guys are Pete. I guess you get that question a lot. Right. Who's as soon Pete? as we walked into the studio <laughs> this Pete morning. Pete does uh, stand for something. Oh, really? Pete's, uh, Pete stands for a Pursuing Excellence Through Encouragement. So it started the book. The idea nice. started out as uh, first we wanted to write a book about oh. encouragement. Yeah. And then came the idea for a popcorn kernel. And then <laughs> came the name Pete. So, <laughs> and uh, of course, everybody wants to know uh, how we came up with uh, writing a book about a popcorn kernel. Yeah. And uh, I work on the airplanes uh, for a, a major airline. And we were selling popcorn on the airplane one day. And I looked at the bag of popcorn and there were about five different flavors of popcorn in one single bag. And uh-huh. I thought, geez, these kernels didn't know that they were all going to pop up and be something different. Yeah. And uh, that's where the uh, idea came to uh, do it about a popcorn kernel. Oh, how nice. And this is so timely. You know, we just had the uh, incident in Chardon and, uh, you know, it, that's the kind of uh, thing that happens if people don't feel comfortable in their own skin and don't feel comfortable being themselves and they feel like they have to lash out because they're angry. So what you guys are doing is actually trying to do Kind of a little preventative med- medicine for that kind of a thing. Absolutely. Uh, Joe's uh, nephew was being bullied last year, <gasps> and that's how we decided to write. I always wanted to write a children's book. It mm-hmm. just seemed like a fun project, yeah. and then that gave us our message. And it really is too late. Once they become teenagers, uh, like the the incident in Chardon, it, yeah. it, once they're teenagers, it's too late to teach an anti-bullying message to them. So we decided to start with uh, younger children and uh, – present it as a very subtle encouragement message instead of a blatant anti-bullying. Yeah, that's because a good good approach. Yeah. Little kids, they, they don't get the, the message of anti-bullying, but they mm-hmm. will get the message to encourage one another. And we've really learned that in uh, some of the readings that we've done at classes around the area. After we're done reading the book, we do a little experiment with the children, and we take one volunteer, and that child has to pick one of their friends in their class and say something nice about them. And then that student says something nice about the original volunteer. And we go through four, five, six different kids, mm-hmm. and uh, they have really taken the message. I'm surprised. Some of the compliments that come out of those kids' mouths is amazing. Wow. You know, I've, I was actually watching a show recently where they were saying that we are actually hardwired as human beings to be as a group and help our community and, and encourage other people, but we are taught. Uh, since the time we were very young, to uh, separate ourselves and become individuals, and therefore we have to pick on other people that aren't like us because everybody's supposed to be the same. But it's actually, we're not hardwired that way. We actually learn that behavior. So what you're doing is trying to teach them what they're really naturally like anyway. Right. It's just as easy to come into class in the morning and be nice to other people as it is to... uh, have a chip on your shoulder. Um, and in Pete the Popcorn, uh, that's uh, uh, he, he's feeling down in the dumps uh, that day. Oh. And uh, his friend Patty, his neighbor, comes in. And in the book it says, Pete's neighbor, Patty the Pale Popcorn, knocked on the door to Pete's pad. <laughs> Come on, Pete. It's a perfect day. Today we're going to learn the secrets to performing the perfect pop, Patty said. And she goes on to find out what's uh, what's up with Pete, why he's not feeling too hot that Aww. day. And she encourages him to come to school, come to popcorn prep, <laughs> and uh, in, enjoy the classroom, enjoy the day. You're listening to In Focus on 1077 The Wolf. I'm Sandy Bennett, and I'm talking with Nick Rokicki and Joe Kelly, the authors of the new children's book sensation, Pete the Popcorn. I have to say the illustrations are so so adorable, too. Our illustrator really did an book. awesome job. Yeah. Kathleen Smith Waters from Lakewood, and uh, she this is her second children's book. She did an amazing job with the illustrations. And that's the thing. Um, a lot of people ask about um, the, the longest process of doing a children's book, mm-hmm. and it is the finding an illustrator. We went ah. through that process for about eight months until we finally found Kathleen. And when we got the first picture of Pete's, and it, he looked oh. like we thought he should. Yeah. So. I know. He's so, I know. We, we took a few pictures here in the studio. <laughs> we put him on the mic. We got <laughs> Reminds you of like a flat Stanley type project with his little Pete. Yeah, he's so cute. Yeah. 
Pete has gone all over. We've actually mailed out a few uh, Pete's across the country, <laughs> and we've gotten some pictures back from Washington in front of the White House and in Disneyland. Uh, so it's been kind of oh, fun to see the, fun. the Pete pictures coming back. Yeah, very nice. So you guys do this on your website. You have a website. Yes, we have a website, PeteThePopcorn.com. And if you want to see some of the fun Pete pictures, make sure you click on About the Authors. That's the blog ah, section. Okay, and all, of, okay. all the fun stuff goes up there. So it is. <laughs> you guys are a, a lot time. of fun. I could tell when you walked in the door <laughs> that you guys are just a lot of fun. So Well, we had an armful of uh, popcorn yeah. for you, too, because we've been, uh, the, the whole tour across the country is focused on gourmet popcorn shops. They've really, of course, taken the, the, uh, the, oh, the yes. kernel aspect of it all. They love that it's a peat of the popcorn. Mm-hmm. And they're hosting us. So we go into town the day before and we do readings at local elementary schools. And then the following day, we'll go to a gourmet popcorn shop and do a meet and greet and book signing and all that fun stuff. Oh, that's great. I like this. A corny story about popping popping up a corny story about popping up yep that's the tagline for pete's so So cute yeah little kids have really liked it we later on in the story pete's learning that he can pop up to be whatever he wants to be and that all the kernels are going to pop up to be different Uh and so it's so fun to go to these schools and then we're reading the story to them and it says some little kernels even pop up and become popcorn that are presented with little pieces of Bacon, said Professor Popcorn, and the kids all go, ew, bacon. And of course, the next line is about chocolate popcorn, and they all love that. Ah, I see. So it's a subtle anti-bullying message because it really is about encouraging people to just feel good about being who they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, even when I was in school, what I graduated in 2000, Mm -hmm. um, and I think bullying and picking on others it's a vicious cycle. I was a big kid, you know, uh-huh. I'm a little bit overweight, maybe not even a little bit, maybe a lot overweight. And I got picked on because of that. Because you're different. Because I was different. They, oh. And then when I had the opportunity to pick on somebody else, I did it because I felt like I could mm-hmm. because it had happened to me. Yeah. And we need to stop that cycle. And Absolutely. I think if we start to teach kids at a young age that we're all different and um, encourage one another, that eventually the problem will go away. I will look back on, I think there was a girl in our school that, you know, she never, she wasn't quite clean and she always seemed a little disheveled. I think she probably was being either uh, neglected or abused at home, which is probably why she showed up that way. But the kids mercilessly picked on her. And I was too shy at the time, believe it or not, to, to speak up and say something. But I always just feel terrible. I just feel bad. I wish I would have had the guts to say something. And that's another thing is like if, if all of the other kids just are quiet and stand by, even though they may or may not agree with what's going on encourage them to be, feel good that they can speak up. Absolutely. We, we saw um, a, uh, an example of that in one of the schools that we went to uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, one of the young uh, kids in the class that we called on for an, uh, a question that we had asked uh, started stuttering, and he, oh. he had a, a pretty bad problem with that. And right in front of us, right in front of the guests in the classroom, about five or six other kids started making fun of him <gasps> right there. And uh, Joe actually uh, stopped him. He said, that's inappropriate. That's exactly why we're here. Wow. You all need to apologize to him right now. Yeah. And if that happens again in class, you need to help him out and encourage him and find out what he's trying to say and help Mm -hmm. him say it. Yeah. Not make fun of him. So, yeah. Oh, how cool that you guys did that. Yeah. It was, I I was uh, very impressed with Joe for standing up for the the child and, and, and doing that. Yeah, you go, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is In Focus on 1077 The Wolf. I'm Sandy Bennett, and my guests are children's book authors Nick Rokicki and Joe Kelly. And we're talking about Pete the Popcorn. This just really seems like it's almost divinely guided or something that this all seems to be falling into place the way it is. It really did. It really did. The book was released on Leap Day, and we chose that day because the country does need to take a huge leap forward when it comes to bullying in our schools. It so happens that Canada, actually, uh, the last Wednesday of the month of February every year is Anti-Bullying Day in Canada, and wow. it happened to fall on Leap Day this year. Mm-hmm. But I, that doesn't happen in this. We don't have an Anti-Bullying Day. Yeah. And uh, I, I, celeb- some celebrities have stood up. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres and Lady Gaga have stood up for the cause. But I haven't nice. seen like a huge wave across the country yet, mm-hmm. and I think that that uh, needs to happen. So hopefully Pete the Popcorn, uh, the message of Pete pursuing excellence – through encouragement, uh, can spread around the country a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Plus, it's a way, a good way to get the mess. Uh, you know, to try to start the conversation. You know, you read the book. You guys, you guys talk to the kids about it afterward. Right. We ask, we ask the children questions. 
um, what is their favorite popcorn, and we do little activities with them. And they said, and they mentioned different kinds of popcorn. And we want to see what kind of popcorns they think are unique and different and everything. But all the kids have been having a lot of fun, and we also give them a little coloring sheet that they can take home and color. And also, you know, they can check us out on Facebook because we put their classroom in on the photos and everything on Facebook.com. You know, oh, so nice. So Pete the Popcorn. So the kids have really enjoyed it. Ah, so you're getting a really good response. Yes. L- here locally, we will be at Franklin Park Mall today from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. signing copies of Pete the Popcorn. So uh, bring the kids out. Uh, we should have some fun. The movie theater is partnering up to do a little bit of a uh, popcorn related stuff and uh you know the easter bunny will be there too so it's a uh, oh, fun times oh, yeah. uh, at the mall today so we hope to see you out there and Absolutely. Uh, you know we're going to try to do a few readings of the book as well on the, the top of the hour at the mall so noon one and two you'll be able to uh get a reading of the book oh how fun and we'll also do a few little fun activities with the kids like we do at the elementary schools and uh, teach them about encouragement. Right. And if schools are interested in having us, uh, they can they can definitely get a hold of us at Pete the Popcorn at gmail dot com or the information is on the website at Pete the Popcorn dot com as well. Uh, we will come out to your school. We don't charge anything. A lot of authors charge three, four hundred dollars for really? appearances and uh, we're doing it for free. Uh, as long as we can give the kids a coloring sheet that has our website on it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Plus, you're getting a little support from some of the uh, the gourmet um, popcorn shops. Gourmet popcorn shops. Yeah. Yesterday, actually, we were at Campbell's Sweets Factory in Cleveland oh. uh, doing a big event there. And uh, that was actually one of the first popcorn shops that contacted us. Oh, nice. So, yeah. nice. Next weekend, we're going to be in Las Vegas. Uh, popcorn Girl is the name of the company out there. So we'll okay. be going in actually a couple days uh, early and mm-hmm. going to some schools and reading Pete's. She actually has had a book for about a month, and she goes out once or twice a week herself uh, into popcorn the community. Girl. Popcorn Girl does, and she goes out. So Pete can have a girlfriend, <laughs> right? <what> exactly, <laughs> Popcorn Girl. So yeah, yeah, Lori is her name, and she goes out and reads to classrooms once or twice a week, and she's been reading Pete to them for the whole month. So oh, how fun! Yeah, it should be a fun weekend. In, and plus, in Las just Vegas. Uh, I know I I had a friend. Um, I was living in Texas. Wait, wait, besides the point. She was from Vegas, and she goes, you know, we have, we, it's not all the strip. It's like there's regular people that work there. We have grocery stores. We have schools. <laughs> so that's what you're doing. There's regular people. They have schools, and that's who you're Exactly. Go It'll be fun to see the, the, the other side of Vegas, you know, yeah. this weekend. So that'll be a, a good time. Oh, how fun. So but you guys are getting to travel all over the place. Probably meet some really interesting people. You really do, and you hear a lot of stories, too. Just like Joe's nephew was getting bullied, mm-hmm. we hear it. Every event, uh, people say, you know, my my son or my daughter is being bullied Mm -hmm. or has witnessed this in school. Um, Locally here, um, we had an article in the Toledo Blade and, you know, how people can comment underneath the article. Uh And uh, a gentleman was trying to turn it into a political issue. And oh. I just don't think it is. I think it's no. a it's a problem that needs to be addressed, no matter your political viewpoint. Oh yeah, that almost sounds like he might have been a bully. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I even think it does. I mean, there are people. I um, mean, you know, I'm I'm 51 years old, and I know there's people my age that are still never got over it from school, and they're still kind of bullying people in the workplace. It's a problem in the workplace, even. So if they learn at a, at a young age how to handle that and how to um, hopefully. Some of that behavior won't continue through their adult years because some people just never grow up past that. Right. You know, so that's you guys are starting starting out at a good time. I think so. I think so. It's been um, it's been well embraced by the teachers um, at the schools as well, because oh, they've yeah. they've told us that they don't know how to get it across to kids um, without being so blatant that you can't be mean to each other. Yeah. And instead, look at it, the positive side of it and come in into the class and encourage each other. You're listening to In Focus on 1077 The Wolf. I'm Sandy Bennett, and I'm talking with Nick Rokicki and Joe Kelly, the authors of the new children's book sensation, Pete the Popcorn. Also, the older kids. Uh, we've we've been reading some maybe you know, some you know, fourth graders, and so I say the older, the older kids. kids yeah. Fourth graders, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, fifth grade, yeah. But they've enjoyed having us in class. Uh, they think the story is funny, but mm-hmm. they're to the age where they can make fun of it a little bit. Yeah. But we also talk to them about the writing process and oh. and proofreading your work and letting oh. uh, other people look at your work. And uh, letting your parents read your work before you turn it in. And nice. that's another thing that we can talk about with the older students about yeah. the actual writing process of writing a book. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. And how to get, now, are you guys self-published or you have a publisher? How does that work? It is as published through Amazon CreateSpace. 
and uh, they take care of everything. And it's a print-on-demand process. So when a book gets ordered, they print it and ship it out, and that's it. Oh, fantastic. So there was no big upfront costs involved with ordering 10,000 copies or anything like that. Oh, what a great idea. So when it was released on Leap Day, it did hit three number ones on Amazon. It hit number one on the Movers and Shakers list, number one in children's literature, and number one in hot new releases. Oh, so we were very, very excited about very that. Very nice. I know. I remember talking about it on our morning show because that's when I'm on the air. And I thought, you know, how cool is that, that you guys are coming? From? I mean, and even even if you weren't from Toledo, it's a great thing. And then the fact that you are from Toledo, you know, wow, kudos right, to us for right. raising a couple of great people out of our area. <laughs> Absolutely. We're excited to be doing a lot of local events with the book. There's a, a children's book fair coming up in May that we hope to be a part of. Uh, the library has expressed some interest in having us come in for readings. And, of course, the, the mall this afternoon, um, it was nice to have the mall embrace a local author yeah. and uh, have an event for us. And we hope to see a lot of people out there. Yeah, what a great opportunity. to or, And something to do with the kids. You know, you got them all weekend. It's like, what am I going to do? Hey, go out to the mall, have some fun, repeat the popcorn, have some fun activities. It's educational, yeah. too. The um, a lot of the parents have come up, and even if they weren't anticipating buying a book that day, if they run into us and see that there's authors right there, yeah. it's a learning experience for the child. And they get to know that there's actually people out there that write a book. And you can meet them, and you can talk to them about, you know, where do you come up with this idea? You can ask us any questions at all, and we're happy to answer those for you, uh, for the little ones that come out and are interested in uh, the writing process or the illustration process even. Uh, Kathleen Smith-Waters has been very good for us uh, to do a video that we show to the students at the end of the readings. A little three-minute video that she talks about how she does Pete, how she does the the illustrations, and she does a sketch first, and then she puts it on the computer and refines it, and then when she actually colors it, it's hand done with watercolor paint. I must say this: it's one of those. But you're you're enticed to read it just because um, the pictures really are they're they're they pop out at you, and then the, even the the print is nice and big, so you can read it. And yeah, it's all it's just a fun, it's a fun a fun book to even just glance through, even if you're not reading. But the story is is the right. essence of the story is what's really great. Yes, in the book, uh, you'll notice. Um, for for instance, on this page, what's the problem, Pete? Asked Patty as she pushed open the door. Don't be a punk. We have to persist in our positive point of view. So there's every P word you could imagine in the story. Um, and a lot of kids, they they ask us, how did you know all those P words? And uh, we didn't. We had to, we wrote the story and then we went back through and replaced a lot of words with uh, the P word which that's called alliteration, when you use the constant repeating of one consonant sound in the story. So uh, they've they've really learned that, which is kind of cool, too. Uh, The teachers are so excited that we bring up something like that uh, that's a little bit advanced in the story. It's it's also makes it more fun to read for some reason. I don't know why, but it's fun to say that sentence. Absolutely. More fun than it would be just to say it regular. Absolutely it is. Yeah, the the kids have fun with uh, the little tongue twister almost. Yeah. And also there's a few hidden things in the book that uh, keep it interesting for the kids. Uh, Pete is actually taking a spelling test at Popcorn Prep. He's in his popcorn spelling class. (laughs) And, of course, they're learning about popping up. So their spelling test has everything to do with popcorn. Ah. So Pete has correctly spelled the word butter. However, he has spelled macrowave instead of microwave. Oh. So uh, parents, when they're reading the book to the kids, they can point that out. And uh, hopefully okay. Pete will proofread that and catch it before he turns it into the teacher, right? <laughs> and the teacher's name is Miss Priscilla Popcorn. So. Ah, Priscilla, yes. <laughs> But even in the even in the book, when parents uh, pick it up, um, we've noticed that a lot of kids like this page here, where uh, they see the different kernels, and even the kernels look a little bit different. One has glasses. Um, it's it's it really teaches them mm-hmm. that um, they they everybody's different. So yeah, hopefully, if we start younger with the children, like we're trying to do, uh, people will get the lesson across that it's okay to be different. It's okay to be who you are. Uh, we all pop up and become somebody different, and uh, we should encourage that among kids and encourage each other, um, and that's the real lesson that we want to get across with Pete the Popcorn. But absolutely, I hope people come out to Franklin Park Mall today and yes, see us 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll be there uh, signing copies of Pete, and if the kids have any questions about how it, uh, you write a book, the illustrations, anything, we'll be happy to spend some time We're and talk to the kids, too. And there's a bunch of giveaways uh, with the theater involved 
So it should be a fun day at uh, Westfield Springfield oh, Park. Absolutely, and plus you guys are just a lot of fun. I mean, I, I will just say that <laughs> to anybody who's listening. You got to meet these guys because they're fun. So. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. This has been In Focus on 1077 The Wolf, where each week we take a closer look at our community. Many thanks to my guests this week, Nick Rokicki and Joe Kelly, the guys that wrote the children's book, Pete the Popcorn. Keep listening to The Wolf. Ken Cooper is in at 8 with Retro Country on 1077 The Wolf.